Hello and welcome to this masterclass presented by Just Like Us for School Diversity Week 2021. School Diversity Week is an event created by Just Like Us to celebrate LGBT plus diversity and representation within schools in the UK. In a few moments, I'll be welcoming our masterclass speakers for today, YouTube personalities Matthew and Ryan, who will be speaking on, quest on the question, how can I be myself online and stay safe? They will also participate in a Q&A towards the end when they'll be answering some of your questions. But before we start with that, I'll take a moment to talk about safeguarding. Staying safe online is important at all times and School Diversity Week is no exception. So we provided a link below to some information that will help you do just that. Now I am so thrilled to introduce today's masterclass speakers. These two amazing content creators spread the message love is love through their online presence with a tremendous following over multiple platforms. With their YouTube channel full of videos about their relationship, pranks and challenges and advice for the LGBT plus community, this couple let the world know that regardless of anyone's opinion, you are never wrong for being you. Without further ado, I'll hand over to Matthew and Ryan. Hey Everybody. guys, thank you so much Alexa for the lovely intro. So I'm Matthew. And I'm Ryan, the best way is just brown and blonde hair. <laughs> and we are online content creators and we have been making content online since 2016, so coming up, mm -hmm. is that six years or five years? We're not going to do the maths today. No maths today, this isn't a maths <laughs> class, but I think it's really six. Um, and we had just had the best time just yeah. sharing and putting ourselves out there to the world and very much sharing love, life, mm -hmm. adventures, the ups and downs of being in a gay relationship and LGBT life. So I think that's why we're here to kind of talk to you guys about dealing with bullying online. Even though we have the, the best experiences online, there's obviously the downside to being online and the people will discuss those with you guys on the, the next slide. So um, we are, like it says, uh, LGBT content creators, and we've amassed 3.4 million followers over the past six years, which has been mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. And it didn't start like that. Like we started making our content and no one was really watching. And we were getting what, like 10 views sometimes yeah. on our YouTube videos. And we were like over the moon by it that anyone was watching. But over the past like year or so, it's, it's really, great. really, really good. So definitely it? a little side note, though, if there's something you want to do with your life, like don't just quit, just carry on, carry on, keep trying and trying and working towards that because like dreams are like there to be achieved. Definitely. Um, and I think when we started, a lot of people, uh, I guess you could call it bullying, were it was bullying, definitely <laughs> bullying in terms of the fact of laughing that we were making this content online, like people around us, even that people that we would call friends at the time yeah. that necessarily aren't friends now because of the way that they treated us then but just us carrying on and staying true to ourselves and knowing what we wanted to achieve really helped us mm. drive past that and get where we are yeah, today. Yeah I think even like in the sense of like bullying it might be just the, the, the snar snarky comments um, that people make um, just to show that maybe someone's not supporting you in terms of what you want to do that is still class is bullying and like friends can do that um friends and family can do that and it's a form of bullying that maybe not is always uh, really obvious um but it, if it's making you feel like sad or having a negative impact on you um then that is a form of bullying now the next two slides just give a quick overview of the platforms we're on yeah. um if you wanted to check out our content or just see what kind of content we create so we have a youtube channel which was where we started it all um in ryan's uni bedroom years and years ago <laughs> and we basically share a lot of lgbt advice on there we have a whole lgbtq plus series mm. dealing with things about coming out bullying all those kinds of things that you can find on our playlist yeah. and we also just do a lot of like vlog sharing our life and how we live as an lgbt couple yeah, and it's very similar to what we put on instagram instagram we put a little bit more like behind the scenes like we share we try and share like normalizing same-sex couples so we involve like our little family with our little dog um and just us doing goof things and what we do in real life we try and be really authentic and real and then over on TikTok, we share, try and make people laugh. Um, so we do a lot of like pranks, comedy sketches, um, but also to share every other aspect of our life. We do a lot of like travel content when we're able to. Um, and that is kind of content we do. Just to overall, I think our goal is just to normalize uh, a same sex couple and Definitely. just to share light on like adventure, love and having a really good time. And one of the reasons we just highlighted the 3.4 million followers again is because it's 
we put ourselves out there to so many people and there are so many positive comments which really make your day and there are obviously a lot of negative comments which is bullying online which we'll discuss later on just to kind of shine to light that although there is a big following there of what you think would be positive there's a lot of negativity that we can share our experiences and give advice if you are experiencing that too so if we head to the next slide please um so and then the next one after that sorry <laughs> we're going to discuss kind of being your authentic self and um dealing bullying, with bullying online. online so i think another thing is when dealing with bullying online is the fact that like it it's nothing wrong with you. I think bullying can happen to absolutely everyone. So I think in terms of why bullying happens uh, or why someone might choose to bully someone, um, firstly, in terms of if you are getting bullied, it's never a reflection of you. Um, I think we'll start by saying that it's never something that you've done. There's nothing wrong with you. You should have changed who you are or how you portray yourself. Um, in terms of being bullied, it's always, the person that's doing the bully and they are the ones that have got the issue i suppose definitely and i think a lot of the time especially online of course there's lots of like group chats or if you've got um instagram or anything like that and you've got a lot of friends on there or a snapchat or something and you're all mm -hmm. chatting it can be easy for someone to try and like make jokes that are kind of that they are bullying because it's not very nice against you or someone else mm -hmm. just because they want to get attention from other people or make themselves look popular or look a bit more a bit yeah more harder, I, think, really. I think i think like even we go back to our school time i thought there are so many times where someone wants to be in that crowd that popular group so to get into that crowd they're like kind of bully someone else or make a few comments or jokes about a certain someone in that class which then might give them that kind of credit or popularity and I think in their minds people see that and like oh that's how you get popular and it becomes like a normal thing um so that's one of the reasons why we believe people get bullied but another one is because they might simply be jealous of who you are then you might have the cool phone or you've got like the cool parents or you've been on an amazing holiday or they might be just jealous of like your hair or whatever it is people tend to can bully people because they're jealous of what they have and what they haven't got so on the next side we're going to cover things on what to do if you are being bullied now it's such a big thing that i feel like if we could see you all now watching this if we asked you to put your hand up i feel like everyone probably would put their hand up and say that they have been bullied once during their time at school it's such <laughs> a normal thing to experience and i think we need to reiterate again that if you're being bullied it's no reflection of you as a person mm. like it's really important just to remember that just because you're being bullied it doesn't make mean that you're any less of a person or is that or that there is anything wrong with you mm. um i think let me just quickly grab on that one um so, so what you can do so firstly like matthew just said remember you're not alone um if you are being bullied remember that like it's unfortunately but every person's probably been bullied at some point in their life um and it might just be like maybe like snarky comments from their family or friends or it might be something more serious um so everyone gets bullied um and i think also thinking of bullying from a different perspective now i know it's really hard when you're getting bullied because you just kind of feel in like someone's being really horrible to yeah. you whether it be online or in person and you feel like you want to shut away from it all but almost changing the mindset in terms of although what you're experiencing is really horrible but think don't even engage with them in terms of the fact think of it in different perspective like they're the ones with the issue they're the ones clearly going through something negative that you don't want to be a part of and just almost rising above it and just keeping your chin up and remembering mm. that you're really and really strong that's that's a really really hard thing especially if you've got a few people calling you a certain name or a certain word and it's a continuous cycle that's really really hard just to try not to beat yourself up about um and i think that then leads you to try and channel your energy and your mindset into something that you love to do um so that might be like creating content like that might be drawing that might be painting might be reading um doing something you love to do just to take your mindset off that um it could be a really really great space um to kind of 
how you can still have been bullied. And these are definitely things that we relate to every day yeah. in terms of, although on our content online, like we are so our authentic selves online, which is what we want to um, help you guys feel mm -hmm. like you can be as well online. But with all the positive comments, we get a lot of people really appreciating that we're so openly gay online mm -hmm. and that we kind of offer them support in terms of showing them that it's okay to be you, like it is genuinely okay to be you and mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to change yourselves. But sometimes there are negative comments or people that necessarily yeah, aren't it. exposed yeah. to LGBTQ plus people don't really understand it so they leave a negative comment and half the time they don't probably mean it when we've met people that have said to us before they've left negative comments and how we've kind of changed their mindset of how they look at lgbtq plus it's people it's so much easier doing stuff online especially that's why it's online bully it's very easy to call someone a name online rather than call it to someone's face and i think when people are trying to attack or bully someone they might go off uh, I might go after something that you know that you're insecure about. So for me, it's always my voice and how I sound. That used to be a big thing that I used to get bullied for. And now I look at it as like, that is who I am. And I'm really, really proud of that. So I think that's where your mindset comes into it. I think be proud of exactly who you are. Whatever these names are being called at you, eventually you will like laugh that about yourself. Um, the next thing we want to discuss on um, the next slide is basically we when you get a lot of um kind of online people not necessarily agreeing with who you are or being your authentic self or making comments or just bullying you mm. but like one piece of advice that we always stick to online is just don't respond to them because that is totally what they want to have is a response from you um that's the reason that they're doing it is to either show off to their friends or because they want to kind of annoy you and get under your skin with whatever they're saying and I think making sure you don't reply to any bullies online and just right completely rising above it showing that you're the bigger person mm. is such a big thing to remember yeah and I think that kind of comes into like uh like that saying like feed is it feed the fire feed the fuel, fire, yeah. fuel the fire you guys you guys know what I mean when like if you're gonna go into something they're gonna carry on if you're gonna um advise that and give them exactly what they want they'll know where they'll carry on doing it because they're going to get a response from you. And I think in terms of bullying people, if you show that you're not, if you're not responding to someone's bullying, then they tend to get bored and move on. Um, I find that's a very realistic case. Um, another thing is save the evidence. In times where like you, you want to like kind of go and speak to like speak to someone like your teacher, your friends, your parents, or an online group, save the evidence. Um, can really back up your case in the sense of like like this is what's happened duh, duh, duh. because if someone's if someone's the bully they're never gonna really own up to bullying you so saving the evidence um in terms of like if it's online like screenshotting them so you, you can just report that to your family or whoever in your school um i think that kind of goes on to reporting the bully and like make sure to talk to someone that's the biggest thing i feel like when you're going through a situation where you're being bullied especially online because we've all got phones so it's not like necessarily bullying stops at the school gate yeah. it's when you're at home if it's happening in your devices that kind of thing just make sure you really do talk to someone and whether it's a friend a family member or a teacher at school it's really really important that although you might feel it's just the wrong thing to do and that you shouldn't talk to anyone just talking to someone really does get a weight off your shoulders if you're and being I think, bullied yeah i think that's in a sense like if you share a friendship group and like you're, let's say someone's like decided not to like you as much or they've started bullying you unless like a sleepover or something like talking to your other friends that like you want to be invited you want to be part of this group um that can then lead on to uh conversations of how you can resolve that and um, because sometimes if you're getting bullied it might just be a misunderstanding at the same time um so that's why i think talking to someone is really really important but just obviously make sure you do it in a safe space um and there's a network around you definitely i think that definitely goes into like when we're our authentic selves online obviously we share so much but if i didn't have ryan and i'm sure if ryan didn't have me we <laughs> would feel the need to talk to someone for example when we yeah. do get negative comments and people just being not very nice on some of our content we've got each other to like support each other we're very good at being rising above it because there's two of us and we just know that there is absolutely nothing wrong for us for being us but i feel like we still sometimes do talk about it in terms of 
just checking in with the other person, making sure that they're okay. And I feel like if we didn't have each other, we would definitely still be talking to friends or finding a service that we could talk to someone just to talk through the things that we're reading. Yeah, and I think that kind of leads on to the next line in the sense of what you can do if you're seeing someone be bullied. Um, I think the first thing is really difficult and it's really difficult sometimes to get involved because it can be scary. You don't want to then get bullied yourself. I, I completely get that. And I think that's such a real experience that we all go through. You don't want to see like uncool. You don't want to be the next target. So I think that's a real thing. But I think if that if people don't get involved, then it never gets resolved. So even just when it's that situation's been diffused, checking in on that person that's being bullied, um, it's really, really important to let that person that's getting bullied know that, that they're not alone. Definitely. And it's also, uh, in terms of talking to bully themselves, obviously you have to think about being in a safe space yeah. and not necessarily just going up to bullies and talking to them um, and getting involved in a negative way. It's if, for example, you are a bystander and you're friends with someone who maybe is picking on someone or taking don't the mick out of someone that. just don't encourage it and like sit back and laugh is just really important especially online for example if someone's you know leaving negative comments on someone's uh content that really don't wants like to, it don't be liking the comments and just encouraging that behavior because it will just spur someone who's in the bullying shoes to maybe leave a few more comments it could really negatively affect someone else yeah and i think i think as soon as you like a comment maybe from a bully that has has maybe a negative um, outlook on someone else, you're encouraging that behaviour and you're normalising that behaviour. And I think down the road, you might think, oh, it's it's funny. Um, it might be funny for you, but that's been put yourself in that person's shoes. And would, if that was you, would you like that? Would you think that's funny? 90% of the chance you'll say no. Um, and that's where like you maybe shouldn't really do it because it's just, it's just really not cool. And in terms of being your authentic self online, there's a few like takeaways that I think are really important in terms of when you're putting yourself out there online and you know, you're sharing your profiles with friends, family, don't feel pressured to be into stuff, like looking at what other people are doing and feeling like you have to live up to a certain expectation because obviously social media, you're only seeing like a pinpoint of what people want you're to only show. You're the best of the best of their lives. So if you're looking at someone, for example, let's talk about someone who's very out there in the LGBTQ plus world, looks like they're having an amazing time, loads of supportive friends around them, and you feel like you need to be making content to match that so you can feel what you think that they're feeling. Don't necessarily just look at what's online, like make sure you're in a safe space, make sure you're creating because you want to create it. And if you don't feel ready to create LGBTQ plus content or any content of you being you, then just take your time. Like there is no rush. Like you've got all the time in the world and it's your journey. And I think that's very similar to a sense of you're with a group of people and they're acting a certain way with someone else in school or, or online. And you feel like you have to do that to be with that group and fit in. Just know that if that that's not the way, like you can, if they're like bullying someone then they're clearly not very nice people they've got issues that they've got to go for themselves it if you lose that friendship you will find other friends you will find enough a community that do like love you and adore you and make you laugh and smile so don't be scared to take a step back and be like mm, that's not really cool like you bullying and even if you feel like you can't not kind of support it just fading out um it's always a good alternative um if you can't just call them out and then checking on that person if, if you want to do something just know that it's not okay and just fading out and you'll be fine to make friends as well and when you are being your authentic self online i feel like there's always the worry that people aren't gonna like what they see whether it be whether you're sharing your hobby for example i do a lot of pottery outside of like our matthew and ryan bubble and when i first started doing it i was worried just to share it to our audience and to our family and friends in case they thought it wasn't cool or mm. in case I didn't look good doing it because I was it's such a um, like difficult hobby sometimes and I think just making sure you stay true to yourself when because people have obviously said that some of the things I've made aren't very good but just remembering that I like what I make it's important that I like what I do online and that the content that I'm putting out there is what I want to put out and just reminding that you know you're not going to get on with everyone like no. we're all normal people in terms of 
you're allowed to not necessarily gel with this person or that person as long as everyone is just being kind and not spreading hate that's just such a big thing yeah and i think like even if you aren't interested in something or you are interested in something and you worry that people won't think it's cool you're going to be so surprised when there'll be a whole new community a whole new friendship group that will love what you're doing and you'll have that whole new little kind of family there to support you on that hobby um because not everyone's going to like you but there is going to be people that do like you and i think that's where you want to focus i think that's one thing as well that i think we found with our we've got such a massive lgbtq plus community mm -hmm. throughout our following and i feel like us just making the videos that we've made has helped us not only find ourselves but mm -hmm. also create just such an amazing unique family yeah. which online that we can always fall back on when we need to which like we which never we, would ne we would never had if we listened right at the start when we were getting bullied for starting youtube instagram and tiktok um, and people kind of like taking making the fun of us for doing that we would have never carried on to have like such an amazing like friendship groups and the community that we have now so i think it all goes 360 in terms of like if you are getting bullied don't stop doing what you want to do um just make sure you're in a safe space talk to someone and if you are the person that's been the bully just know that it's not cool um you can make friends other way as well definitely and i think there's a couple of like q and a's and things that i think yes. we'll go through um That was an absolutely amazing presentation. Thank you so much for all that brilliant mm -hmm. advice. I'm sure people are going to find it really helpful. We hope so. I think it's such a big thing, isn't it? Like everyone is online now. A lot of people have all these accounts and things. And mm -hmm. one thing as well that I just forgot to um, touch on is if you feel like you want to uh, like block people or anything online, whether it be in friendship groups or you just feel like you just need some time apart, um, now when you block someone on certain platforms it also blocks other accounts that they create so for mm. example trolling is such a thing that happens to all ages not just people in school yeah. even older people so if you were to block someone that is not being very nice to you online or block their other accounts they might have there is an option to do that now which is really important mm. that's really good I, I didn't know that that's some great advice and as your last slide said i hope you're ready because we've got a q and a for you uh, so we're going to answer, ask some questions from our audience and all the questions today have been submitted by school students and are going to be asked on their behalf by some of our Just Like Us ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So Thank the you. first ambassador that is going to ask you a question is going to be Marco. Hi guys, Hi. Thank, you for the, thank you for the amazing talk, you are, you are absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Uh, my question would be how do you look after your mental health while being out online? I definitely think uh, it's taken time to switch off. And I think it's so hard, like for me, like before I go to bed, like I'll just pick up my phone and end up scrolling. I think it's really important to kind of like force yourself in a sense to take time off, 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 off of life. <laughs> so I think that's really, really important to do things that you love, like take a bath, read, um, go for a walk with your friends, go play with your dog, do something that you love. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, I would so like echo that because I feel like we, especially throughout like the last like year where we've all been kind of like cooped up indoors, we're so like just all looking at like our devices mm -hmm. and that has become like life, especially because it's like our job as well. Mm -hmm. and we do it day in, day out. Actually like taking a step back and like just opening your eyes up to the world is just such a thing that we now like definitely take time out. Yeah. So I think that's just the main thing, like just take time out for you. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Thank you. I always become so anxious just scrolling or you know, the information overload. So yeah, I feel like, it's, I feel like yeah. it's just so addictive. I feel like you have to force yourself, like stop. Yeah. And then as soon as you pick up a book or put a Netflix show on, you like, or go out with your friends for dinner or walk or explore somewhere, you actually realize like, oh, I actually really enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again thank, thank you. you yeah massively relatable that's a that's a really cool answer uh, right so the next one is coming from lily hi uh, hello uh, my question is uh whether or not there are any websites i can use where i don't need to use my name odo 
Well, this is one that we, when we, um, we thought about this before and thought, I wonder if there are any, anything that we could do. And we thought, well, actually all social media necessarily, you could start, for example, if you've got a hobby, or you spot you again, for an example, you could start an account and not necessarily put your name and have like a nickname. That's just mm. something that just, you know, maybe put a photo of like a pet or a cartoon that you like, and then you can still be very accessible on all platforms. Yeah. And for example, uh, before like years and years ago, I remember I made an Instagram before I was like properly, properly out. And I put a different like nickname, a different photo, but then you can still access like the hashtags and, you know, get advice from what other people put online. So you, you can still definitely get access. So I'd yeah, say- Yeah, and I feel like you'd be so surprised how many people still do that. And I feel like, like, I remember when this, this really shows my age, but when I was in school, I used to go on like Neopets. <laughs> It's like, uh, okay, I was so glad we've got some nods. Um, like, Neopets, and like, I had a nickname, like a username, which is obviously not my name, and my character, like, Avatar. So I feel like even on social media now, you can still, like, have that. I feel like, I know people that love books, but they don't like social media, and they'll have, like, a book cover, and it's all about books. They're still building a friendship community without actually having to be their face online so then they know they're safe the even my mum she's not really into social media oh. but she <laughs> loves like doing her garden and planting and stuff and she's thinking about making me an account but not having her on it so yeah. no one would know it was her but just around plants like yeah. there's so much you can do and I think people forget that you can like you can definitely do yeah. that thank you so much thank you that's really great and yeah I remember you know, pets right so okay, next either. one Next one is going to be from Celine. Hi guys, thank you so much. It was a really interesting talk. Um, I actually wanted to ask a question. Um, so obviously, apart from your amazing channels, are there any websites that can help me figure out how to identify or how to come out? Um, I think the main ones that really spring to our mind that helped us, LGBT Foundation, mm. um, they've got so many resources on there and they've got helplines if you want to talk to someone on the phone confidentially and mm. also Stonewall, but I would say... I also just think you'll be so surprised by just Googling your area and Googling that like each area has different smaller ones, like for us in Hampshire you've kind of got like a uh, breakout and stuff like that that's breakout charity which is like a Hampshire based charity so even just googling your local areas there'll be specific LGBT plus um charities and forums and group networks there and to support you. I, I... I don't want to say that all of them are because I'm not 100% sure, but so many of them are confidential as well. If you're thinking, God, I really don't want to tell anyone or talk to family or friends about it yet, but you want to talk to someone about it that doesn't really know your circle or anything like that. Mm. So many of them are confidential. So what you say to them or if you want to talk to them about coming out or how you identify, it's going to stay between you and them. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Also, love your earrings. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. That was a really nice one. All right, so we, to carry on, we've got Freya next. Hi. Um, I think it's really inspiring that you carried on, um, even though you, when you only had like 10 views, I think that's a really great thing that you did, you know, just and to where you are now. Um, my question is, what are the biggest challenges that you face as LGBT plus creators with such a big audience? Yeah, I feel like um... I feel like there's two. I feel like one. I feel like a lot of people we get a lot of DMs and a lot of messages, and a lot of people, whether it be coming out or anything, like asking us. And I think there's sometimes pressure of always having like the right answer when there isn't necessarily always a right answer. It all just depends on someone's individual journey. And I'd say that's sometimes quite a big challenge in terms of having a bigger following where you are like influencing people mm -hmm. and um obviously got really connecting with you them don't want to get it wrong you do don't want to get it wrong yeah. or give them the wrong advice if it's not right yeah. for them i think another one is like being misunderstood i think if people come across our content maybe they their knowledge for like lgbtq plus community isn't 100 there and they're not necessarily being rude nasty or bully and they're just like inquisitive is that the right word yeah that's a nasty <laughs> word um they might just want to know more so in a sense they might be like for me it might be like why do you wear makeup 
um, or it might be like who's the man and who's the woman in the relationship. And those, those can that that happens quite a lot. And I think in a sense that's difficult sometimes because you just want to like normalize that like that that for both men. But I think educating is a really, really great way because I think if you educate one person, they can educate three people, and it starts a massive um, kind of like domino effect. So I think those types of questions like who's a man who's a woman in a relationship how you have kids uh you haven't just met you haven't met the right woman it's definitely not to more to me that's definitely more to him but like or like all those types of questions i think those can sometimes have a be quite difficult yeah i'd say those are the main mm. ones thank you thank you yeah that sounds tough but you've done a great job becoming these inspiring people so you you really um, take it really well and run with it is what I see. Um, so now we've got Rory coming in. Hi Matthew and Ryan, thank you very Hi. much for your talk and the positivity today, not just from your talk, but from those amazing cuddly toys behind you. Love thank them. Thank you. <laughs> um, so for a lot of LGBT plus people like us, it's one step to come out online. It's another then to showcase a same gender relationship you may be in. So my question is, what, why do you share things about being LGBT plus and your relationship online? I'm going to go first. You go first. I would like if like if someone asked this question, my first thing is like, why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't? Why wouldn't I share my relationship? Um, we've always pride ourselves on like really pushing to normalize same sex relationship. We don't understand how you can't get married in certain countries. You can't be with someone you love in certain countries or how people get like hurt and like lose family and friends because of who they are. Like it makes no sense because it's such a s small thing. Mm, definitely. And I feel like one of the main reasons is because like when we were well when I was younger there wasn't really much to see online yeah. in terms of like social media wasn't really a thing it's always a it man was, and woman and everything yeah and it was very not like it is today like the change in the last like 10 years or something yeah. has been insane but like just for the people that need it that when I needed it just by putting ourselves out there and knowing we're making a difference is such a and big I also thing just, isn't it I also think like even the people that are, like are an ally and they're not they're not necessarily like gay or however they identify they might be straight but they might have like a, a gay uncle or stuff like that I think holding hands in public or showing like affection online just to normalize that they they can know that like even though they're straight that if someone is bullied getting bullied for their sexual orientation they know it's not okay and they can then support that person so i think that's another big aspect of what, why we do what we do yeah thank you very much that was a really great answer and I think we're all really glad you do what you do because you bring such positivity. And then uh, we've got another question from Marco. Hi guys, it's me again. Hey. <laughs> so my question is, what do you want other young people to know about being LGBT plus? Um, what would want other young people to know? That it's normal, 100% like it's the answer, like it's so normal. I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of people that aren't LGBTQ+, plus, uh, they just need to remember that it's so normal, regardless of what family or friends or anyone say, it's so normal, it's such a normal thing and something that, you know, is going to keep on growing positively over I think your, the future. Your feelings, like, do not need to be justified. Um, I think that's really, really important. Your feelings of, like, who you like, um, you don't need to, you don't need an answer for that. Like you are who you are. Um, I think that's kind of the baseline, but also just like understanding that maybe you don't know mm. is okay. And like, maybe you're confused. That's all normal. I think everything that you're feeling right now, like if you identify straight, but like you're not 100% sure, like it's normal. You if don't you don't need to label it. Yeah, if you identify as a gay, but then maybe you've fallen for a girl like it's normal i think it's normal so don't be so hard on yourself and give yourself some love that you would give to your family and friends and just know that you're accepted and you're normal there's a whole like a really really beautiful community that will love you for who you are drop the mic 
<laughs> that is such an inspiring message to end on because that was our last Q&A question. So thank you so much for your amazing masterclass today. I think everybody has been so inspired by you. Um, thank Thanks you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, so thank you so much to Matthew and Ryan for joining us. I'm sure everyone watching will agree. It's been a real pleasure to listen to you both. Uh, thank you to everyone who's asked those amazing questions and joined in and listened today. Um, this masterclass is coming to an end, but please do look for all the other amazing masterclasses happening this School Diversity Week. And you can do that by heading to www.justlikeus.org forward slash masterclasses. You can also find more uh, safety resources, online safety resources on the Just Like Us website. And to learn more about today's fantastic guest speakers, Matthew and Ryan, you can look for them on all, media, um, all major social media handles. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today and we hope you have a brilliant School Diversity Week.